and, and good afternoon to you all. Thank you for inviting me here this afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to uh, share some thoughts with you from our side. I think uh, uh, Gilles Carabin, my colleague, uh, provided some, some first uh, context in um, uh, this morning's introduction. And it's my pleasure then to, to close off uh, uh, the, so with some perspectives from our side, from the European Commission side and DG Moves uh, perspective on the future of, of Datex. I wanted to do that just broadly on, on three main topics. First of all, of course, the trends towards uh, digitalization, which we've heard of uh, a lot today. Uh, then maybe go into uh, what the coordination mechanism uh, to federate national access points and the NAPCOR proposal as such uh, could contribute to that. And maybe some final thoughts on, on the actual development of, of Datex and its importance in the, in the wider uh, uh, travel and, and transport spectrum. So uh, of course, uh, digitalization is the buzzword of today. Um, you will have seen that in the Smart and Sustainable Transport uh, strategy that we published in December, uh, which, which uh, Gilles referenced this morning. Um, and uh, more specifically for the work of road authorities, public authorities, the idea that uh, digitalization needs to occur on all kinds of traffic regulations, which are uh, very important for um, service providers to provide the right information to the road users. Um, even uh, as of last week, uh, the European Association of uh, Car Manufacturers, the ASEA, uh, highlighted again the importance for them of having speed limits, having traffic regulations in a digital format of high quality uh, to be able to provide their drivers and their customers with, with the best information possible. Of course, improving safety and improving uh, congestion as a, in that. Now, we acknowledge, of course, that this is very important and it puts a lot of pressure on road authorities and public authorities to digitalize their processes. Um, at the same time, this should be a two-way street in the sense that if uh, public authorities put effort uh, to digitalize these kind of things, make sure that all the information on the speed limits, on the maximum height, width, uh, weight of vehicles on certain, uh, on certain roads, the one-way streets, the road works, uh, all these kinds of things, that if these, uh, these are digitalized and available, there should also be a, uh, a second side to the, to the medal, which uh, makes sure that this data is used in the services towards road users uh, and, 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 and the, the people traveling. So to put it concretely, what we're trying to do also in the legislation and in, in the framework of the ITS directive is first of all, um, looking at uh, marking certain data types as crucial, meaning that these have to be available and accessible in a digital format, machine readable and standardized uh, uh, for all the roads in, in, in Europe. So this idea of marking certain data types is crucial, linked to uh, all kinds of safety purposes, linked to the general safety regulation and intelligence, uh, intelligence speed assistance, uh, linked to making sure that the drivers out there don't run into all kinds of um, uh, um, uh, issues, restrictions, uh, make them subject to fines, these kind of data um, need to be digitalized and out there, uh, which is of course quite a step forward compared to the current ITS directive, which uh, simply says that if data is available, then it should also be accessible in the, in the national access point. So it's really a step further towards mandating that certain data must, must exist. Now, uh, this of course is still part of the ITS directive uh, process and discussion, which will take place in co-decision as well with parliament and council. So we're not there yet. Uh, but we are taking small steps towards ensuring that these crucial data types are identified. And, and this has been done through the revision of the delegated regulation on real-time traffic information services, um, which uh, we are going to publish in, in consultation this summer. And in the revision, we are looking not only at expanding uh, the ge geographical scope uh, and, and uh, adding certain new data types, but specifically strengthening the role of Datex uh, um, in the text um, and uh, marking or at least doing this first, first step towards marking certain crucial data, which according to the framework of the delegated regulation should be accessible uh, um, on the national access points. Now, uh, I mentioned the, the strength and role of Datex. For those of you who know the texts and are familiar with the wording, uh, I, I think uh, the, the Datex was mentioned as um, something that needed to be, um, uh, one second, because I've lost my screen here. Yes, uh, uh, Datex men, uh, was mentioned as a standard to be used or as an alternative, uh, something fully interoperable and compatible with Datex need, uh, needed to be used. Now, of course, that opens the door to a lot of uh, discussions and alternatives. What we're trying to do in this revision uh, is to make sure that uh, Datex is indeed the number one choice. And if other choices need to be made for whatever reason, 
um, these choices need to be made by the member states together. So there needs to be a, a common position on any alternative standards to be used, which of course then restricts already a lot more uh, the flexibility in terms of, uh, of, of having a myriad of different standards being used uh, in, in Europe. It pushes, I think, the, the developments towards making sure that Datex uh, uh, is fit for purpose. And if not, for whatever reason, for whatever new use cases coming along, that at least the member states work together on a common uh, alternative. Um, so this is, of course, then the central part of, of uh, what we're trying to do in the revision of the delegated regulation on real-time traffic information services, and what we will also look at in the context of NetEx and, and Siri, the transmodal uh, standards in the revision of the delegated regulation on multimodal traveler information services, uh, Spec A. Now, as a second point, I mentioned the coordination mechanism. Of course, uh, when we're talking about uh, asking member states to make sure they collaborate on defining common alternative standards, uh, that they do this together and of course the coordination mechanism is the platform to do that uh, there's a strong focus on standardization uh, in the activities of the of the psa of the program support action uh, where of course we would like to see the um, collaboration that Gilles also mentioned this morning between different standards between datex uh, tnits uh, and the transmodal uh, standards to come closer together on all kinds of uh, existing domains but also on future domains which which will arise um, so uh, it, it's imperative that indeed uh, uh, this, this platform, this new uh, PSA will be used by the member states to really concentrate their work on bringing forward the subjects, uh, not only in terms of standardization, but of course also the uh, enforcement and harmonization of the national access points uh, themselves. Uh, so we're really looking forward to, to working together with the member states on that in the, in the coming years. Now, as a final thought uh, regarding the actual use of Datex2, um, of course, uh, there have been a lot of um, there's been a lot of praise on uh, of, of, of uh, uh, Datex2 and its accomplishments uh, today, which is absolutely justified. I think uh, there are still lots uh, there's still lots of work to be done. Um, uh, first of all, the, uh, we'd like to see the barriers for the use of Datex2 be lowered, in the sense of first of all, make sure that uh, it's uh, free of charge to whoever wants to use it. So try to remove any barriers in terms of uh, of costs to access the Datex Datex specifications. But at the same time, also make sure that Datex uh, is, uh, uh, in, in terms of text, technical technical com complexity, easy to use, uh, fast to work with. So we we'll absolutely keep pushing for that to make sure it can be broadly uh, used in, in all kinds of uh, services and, and all kinds of systems. Uh, now, there are lots of future use cases, some which have been mentioned today as well, some which might uh, not yet be uh, as, as much on the radar as, as, as we have them now. I'm quite sure that Datex will uh, uh, always provide a really good um, way forward for these kinds of services, uh, a good starting point. Uh, and, and as Gilles said this morning, it's quite clear that Datex is here to stay. So uh, I want to just close off by thanking you all for your hard work in the past few years um, and, the, and the excellent progress made. And I really look forward to continuing the work with you because uh, there's still uh, a lot to do. So thanks for that and, uh, and, and thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Eduardo, for your supportive word, words, and thank you also for the good cooperation that we have with you. And please also forward our thanks to your colleagues within the European Commission. It, was a, it is a pleasure to cooperate in such a positive and constructive manner. Thank you very much for that. Uh, today we've heard a lot about the achievements of Datex2, and I want to thank the members of the Datex2 community for enabling these achievements. You've done a great job. You can be proud of yourselves. I know I'm proud of you, and I'm happy that I had the opportunity to work with you. As you know, the date is to PSA ends in a few weeks, and to prepare ourselves for this, we set up a task force to get a strategic view on date X2 after the PSA. It was called the task force date X2 after 2020. Because it was clear then, and this has been confirmed today, the date X2 PSA is about to end, but the work on the development and maintenance of date X2 needs to continue. Or, as Gilles said this morning, and Eduardo just confirmed, Datex2 is here to stay. One of the elements of the outcomes of this task force was that our work needs to be done more and more in close cooperation with adjoining domains. As you've seen today, we already started to cooperate with several stakeholders. And what started as a good practice will continue and be intensified under the coordination mechanism to federate the national access points. The call for this coordination mechanism clearly reflects that the EC also underlines the need for more cooperation 
between stakeholders, and this was also said by Gilles and Eduardo, and uh, that they want to put more governance on the co cooperation. Well, this is all taken up in the NEPCOR proposal, of which Datex2 is a part. Well, NEPCOR has not been accepted yet, but we're hopeful and confident that it will be accepted on a short notice. If NEP NEPCOR is accepted, that will be the new home of Datex2, and that refers to another element that was mentioned by the Datex uh, task force, the need for a sustainable organization. Since 2016, Datex2 was hosted by CEDAR, and I would like to thank CEDAR for having hosted us in the past five years. We're now moving out, but of course we will keep the good cooperation. And we found ourselves a new home, and we're moving in with NEPCOR. We managed to get a picture of the new headquarters of NEPCOR. Here it is. Uh, this picture reflects the expression, my home is my castle. Um, our new home comes with a landlord. And as you can see on the next slide, Timo Hoffmann from Germany is the lord of our castle. So a transition is made from the current ATX2 PSA to NEPCOR and from CEDAR to NEPCOR. I would like to symbolize this transition by handing over a key. The key to DATEX2, the key to the heart of connectivity. As you can see, I have a digital key, which is on the slide, but I also have a real key, which is here, and I'm going to hand over both keys. I'll start with the real key. Bart, this is where you come in. Because if Timo is the lord of the castle, then you are the tenant of the castle. And as the chair of the change management board, you will lead that soon into the future. Mm. I want to thank you for your hard work and for your continued support. You're a great chair, you've achieved a lot, and I'm confident that you will continue to do so in the change management board in that court. So, there's your key. I won't get, give you the floor yet, so you will have to wait a minute, because I'll go to Timo first. Um, Timo, I cannot hand you the key personally, but I can give it to you symbolically. Hi, Timo. <laughs> this key Hello. symbolizes all the results of the data to community of the past years. Please take good care of them. They're valuable. Over to you, Timo. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mylen. Um, uh, very kind, kind words here. Um, although I, I wouldn't put myself as the the lord of the castle. Um, maybe as uh, uh, the one who, who made the table uh, the, for the round table in the castle, um, um, which might be uh, an epcor in, in the future. So um, I uh, gladly take the offer to um, share a few slides. So uh, an epcor, uh, an epcor is the National Access Point a Coordination Organization uh, for Europe. Well, that's the abbreviation. Um, my name is Tim Hoffmann. I'm uh, I work for the German Highway, uh, German Federal Highway Research Institute, BAST. Uh, just a few a few words um, about what what NAPCOR is. Um, as as was said a couple of times before, it's um, a proposal for um, a Ceph PSA project. Um, we did manage to get all uh, 27 EU member states, um, uh, 26 as full members, uh, Slovakia as associated partners. So we can indeed claim that we got um, all uh, European uh, member states uh, on board. In addition, three international um, organizations. Uh, UITP as an uh, organization of the um, public transport um, domain um, and uh, since this is of course uh, also a very important um, domain that we do want to um, include and take on, on board and I'll, I'll say something about IT for PT and Ertico um, in a few minutes. Uh, we also have um, Highways England um, uh, on board as well as Norway and Switzerland as associate partners. So indeed a very a wide um, uh, um, range of, um, of uh, yeah, partners in this consortium. Um, the runtime uh, now, and, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the now um, in, in a few minutes as well, uh, until uh, the end of uh, 2024. Uh, we do get, um, oh, we hope to get uh, EU funding of uh, 12 million um, uh, to, to support us in our uh, goals. What are our goals? Well, um, the, the, um, the NEPCOR uh, project is, of course, um, a proposal uh, for the call um, that is uh, was calling for the, an implementation of a coordination mechanism to federate the national access points. 
um, and um, we have some some goals. So we do want to um, facilitate um, EU-wide coordination of the national access points for the harmonization of the implementation of the European specifications on the um, ITS directive. So that's one point. Um, another goal would be to increase the interoperability by establishing or further establishing uh, standards, recommendations, and data exchange content, data access, and data availability in the mobility domain uh, in Europe. Then we do want to empower the national access points as uh, the backbone for ITS infrastructure and mobility data exchange um, in Europe. And lastly, uh, we do want to address existing, uh, but also upcoming developments and challenges with a joint European strategy, vision and, and voice. Um, so we do have, as you can see, a, a wide range of goals. Um, and um, I, I do see it as uh, Datex2 as a, uh, an enabler and, and an essential a fundamental base for uh, these goals. Uh, a quick look at um, our uh, governance structure. I do, don't want to um, go too much into detail, um, but uh, we, we do have some uh, secretariat and some horizontal activities, um, of, of course. Um, but I do want to um, highlight a little bit the working groups um, to give you a little bit of an um, input of what we plan um, to actually uh, do and how we do want to organize uh, the work. So we have uh, five working groups. The, the first one um, wants, uh, or will look at uh, national National Access Point and National Body Platform um, as our group. How do we organize ourselves? Um, how, how, what kind of strategy do we um, take up? And um, how do we govern ourselves uh, to make sure that we are indeed um, organizing ourselves in a sustainable uh, manner? Our second working group is um, taking a look at interoperability and level of services of NAP. Um, so this, uh, uh, yeah, as, as the name states, um, focuses on, on interoperability to make sure that uh, we, um, we do achieve um, uh, further interoperability and harmonization. Uh, the third um, uh, working group will look at um, the content and accessibility. So how, what is actually available uh, currently and what should be available? Where is the gap? Uh, what do we need to do in order to, to uh, close that gap? Uh, that's working group three's uh, job. Um, working group four is um, arguably um, the, the uh, most important one, um, um, at least it's the, the biggest uh, one, because we do have um, sub working groups um, here. Um, and these are uh, quite big, um, um, as you can imagine, as um, Datex2 is indeed the, the first uh, sub working group. Um, uh, then we have a sub working group on, on TNITS um, as another uh, big standard. It was uh, named a couple of times today as well. Um, that uh, can find its new new home within um, uh, within NAP NAPCOR. Um, then the um, the whole topic of multimodal data because that's uh, not covered uh, you know, adequately. Let's put it that way. In, in both DATEX and TNITS, um, we we uh, figured that we do need to. Um, form a dedicated uh, working group on multimodal data and uh, metadata as, as um, a, a key component, of course, to make sure uh, that we'll achieve interoperability and um, we'll have a separate uh, working group as well. Uh, lastly, we have a, um, a national bodies and compliance assessment working group because the uh, national bodies do have a very central role um, for, uh, for quality assurance um, and, and other um, um, topics. So, so it is indeed also an, an important um, uh, yeah, uh, work topic. Um, we we will uh, have a core alignment team. The the leaders of all the activities and working groups will um, form a, a project management team. You can call it um, that um, is making sure that um, everything that we do is uh, on on track with our set out goals and um, that that we um, organize ourselves adequately. Uh, of course, we will we'll have a, a steering um, committee um, where all the partners, um, also of course all the member states with that um, will be um, organized in order to um, yeah, be the uh, final decision body, so to say. Uh, an advisory board will be set up where we will reach out to many stakeholders, private um, data providers or global players, um, service providers, industry projects, experts, and so on. Um, uh, we, as, well, as soon as we do have, uh, as, we, as we start, we'll set out um, to, uh, to explore what, uh, how we set up this advisory board. Um, 
so that was um, almost it. Uh, just a couple, of, uh, um, just this one slide uh, listing the uh, the leads of the various um, activities and, and working groups. And as you can see here, um, there is a wide range of um, member states um, leading the various uh, working groups or subworking groups and activities. Um, TNITS was a project that um, has been. Um, and still is actually um, still uh, run by um, Ertico and um, we, we have um, Ertico also on board uh, with us to make sure that uh, we can continue with that, uh, with that work um, in, in a similar fashion as we do uh, now with uh, hope to do with, with Datex um, 2 and the, um, the, the strong Dutch role here you know, to make sure that we, we uh, can continue um, the good work. Uh, IT4PT um, is a, um, an organization that is currently leading the data for PT um, project, which is uh, indeed also focusing on data standards for multimodal data. And now we do uh, have the same uh, leads here to, um, to make sure that um, we get to know um, what's, what's going on there and, and um, be able to uh, fully integrate all of their work um, into what we do here. Uh, all right, so um, as my last slide, um, where are we? What's, uh, when is uh, NAPCOR starting? And uh, as has been mentioned um, now a few times, we have not received the official notification uh, of acceptance yet. But we do expect it any day now. Um, so, uh, and once um, this is, um, uh, we receive this, we do need to uh, finalize uh, the, the negotiation of the grant agreement um, with the commission. We hope this um, is, a, is a quick uh, process. Um, also, we need to finalize the consortium agreement that we um, are going to sign with, with all partners. Uh, this will um, and this will, uh, has already been started, the work on the consortium agreement. We, of course, need to make sure that this is in line with um, the grant agreement. Um, and then we uh, need some time to finalize everything. So uh, including the legal reviews, which have um, uh, started somehow, um, but, but that needs to finalize. And of course, we need the signatures. Um, we intend to get the activities in the working group started over the summer period anyway. So um, regardless of when we actually sign um, the, the agreements, we intend to um, have the, the work started um, with the, the first initial um, uh, discussions in the groups, uh, talking about you know, working plans and, and the um, uh, organizational issues and how to organize them themselves and so on. So, so that will start. An official kickoff is currently um, uh, planned for uh, the end of September. We hope we can uh, keep it that way. Um, and I will uh, send out the, the, the date uh, soon to all the partners. So uh, with that being said, we do hope for, uh, for a running start um, of sub-working group 4.1, uh, which is the Datex um, sub-working group, um, with uh, no loss in momentum uh, to continue its valuable uh, work. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to, to starting this uh, project and looking forward to having Datex 2 on board. Um, and um, thanks everyone for that. Yeah, well, thank you, uh, Timo. Um... Uh, uh, being the landlord of the the castle from Meyerlein's dreams uh, is uh, is is a honorable task, I think, and I'm looking forward to the collaboration as uh, to be subworking group leader uh, for this two uh, subworking group 4.1. Um, I want to introduce uh, some of the uh, this, the first thoughts of. Uh, work that and approach that we've defined in the preparation of the the response to the call and um uh, it's good i want to start with the good news and that is that we will continue whether there is uh, the support organization will keep on running uh, even if there is no uh, green light from the commission yet um uh, the the actors involved the partners in the datex2 organization uh, have confirmed that they will keep on running the, uh, the websites and uh, the help desk will be uh, responsive as well. So that's, uh, that's good news. And even we will continue to do some content work because um, version 3.2 is finalized, will be on the website very soon. I hope today, but it, that might be a bit too, too tight. We were facing some technical issues there, but it is a, a well-defined set now and uh, the, 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 the work will be uh, published uh, any day now. And in conjunction with that, we will also deliver the final 
profiles that are required to uh, comply with the delegated regulations for RTTI, uh, especially the energy infrastructure publications uh, and the profiles related that, to that, that we have developed together with the IDEX uh, project um, will, be, uh, will become available uh, very soon. So that's the good news. And the best news of today, of course, is that DATEX2 is there to stay. For me personally, the good news is that I'm here to stay as well. Uh, maybe some of this, some of you will frown their uh, bros, but uh, hey, it's part of the deal. Um, I'm going to introduce you into uh, the, uh, the first thoughts of what we uh, see as the future of DATEX2 in, uh, uh, in uh, conjunction with NEPCOR. And uh, like Marjolein said, uh, we started uh, without the concept of NAPCOR, but now we, uh, we have a, a NAPCOR and you recognize this picture. And when we saw this the first time, we had to look where is DATEX2, but it's there. And it's still a substantial part. Uh, the, the size of the, uh, the available budget and commitment is, uh, the budget is comparable to what we have and the uh, resources have grown as we go from more or less 16 partners in the uh, DATEX2 organization to over 30 partners because all associated partners with uh, Switzerland and Norway and uh, the UK, uh, uh, we are, uh, they are, have all indicated that they want to be at least a follower in the DATEX2 uh, subworking group. And that makes good sense because we have a lot of uh, topics to address. Uh, we've heard a lot of the topics already uh, today and we've uh, set up the structure uh, here, uh, which is uh, rather straightforward. We've divided our operational work in uh, several uh, tasks. Uh, we have the alignment task. We have, of course, a project management uh, task we do the support development. The actual delivery is somewhere else in the NEPCOR project, but the development of the DATEX2 artifacts is done in this task 4.1.3. Uh, we see the functional uh, developments, meaning uh, the information and uh, uh, developments and the alignment uh, and inclusion of the agreed uh, uh, alignment work and the new work that comes out of the new delegated regulations. Uh, we need to uh, prepare for the future in the modeling task, uh, modeling and usability. We heard some interesting, uh, very challenging uh, requirements there. It should be simple. Uh, it should be easy. Uh, it will be more complex because we will have more. We will have uh, the mobility data spaces uh, with their own requirements on top of the, uh, of a side of the new thing, uh, the existing things. Uh, we have, are facing the linked open data uh, challenges. We see more and more that we won't transmit data from source to sender, but we will open up data sets and that will respond with an answer to provide the information requested. And all that is affecting the encoding and data transfer uh, in task 4.6. Very relevant to mention here is that we have a change management board and the change management board is slightly different from the uh, steering group that we currently have uh, and it is required on top of or aside from the NEPCOR steering group because DATEX2 uh, has a wider scope than only the data sets that are managed under the uh, scope of the national access points. And we have the collaborating ITS services, uh, we have some uh, data sets that are not yet uh, uh, mandated in the uh, delegated regulations. Um, so we have a basis uh, that is wider than uh, uh, the NEPCOR interest and we uh, need uh, proper uh, governance on that. So we have a change management board that is directing the uh, scope of the, uh, the work plan 
uh, in this sub-working group taking into account the, uh, the existing work that is not governed in NEPCOR uh, only. Well, we have a lot of topics. Uh, we've seen this slide uh, before. Uh, uh, here you see the, the four squares uh, of uh, interest. Um, most of them have been mentioned today. Uh, be aware that we created a backlog uh, for the, the work to do. Uh, took inventory uh, who is willing to participate in the further development of these uh, topics. And all these have been mentioned by sufficient uh, partners to contribute to the further development of Datex2 within, the, uh, uh, within uh, one of these uh, four uh, topics of uh, uh, task areas, I should call them. So, <clears throat> This is the concluding webinar of Datex2, and uh, uh, I'm more or less the last speaker, uh, but I will certainly be one of the first speakers of, on Datex2 in the next uh, uh, phase of Datex2, and I'm really looking forward to bring the ecosystem uh, a step further in the, uh, under the uh, wisdom of uh, our landlord, Timo. Uh, for today, I want to thank you all. Uh, I want to thank uh, Myrline and uh, Jean-Philippe and uh, our teams uh, supporting this um, uh, in this webinar. Uh, we did a great job. Uh, we had to overcome the restrictions of COVID, uh, but I think we uh, reached more people than ever before. Um, and that's also a lesson learned. I think that in the future, we will have hybrid uh, fora uh, in order to reach an audience as wide as possible and to bring the knowledge and the experience uh, to the widest community available. Thank you all and see you in NEPCOR.